As a reminder, when we factor, we are just rewriting in an equivalent manner. So I'm going to use the AC by grouping method in order to factor this trinomial. This is your A term, your B term, and your C term. In this position, I'll always take A times C. Negative 6 times negative 5 is a positive 30, and I will include the sign. This is always A times C. This position is always your B term. It is positive 17. So in this position, I'm asking, what do we multiply? And here is, what do we combine in order to get this? I need to figure out a combination of two values that allows me to multiply to get 30 and combine to get a negative 17. You have a calculator at your desk. And I'm going to assume that maybe your number sense isn't as high as we would like. So how can we come up with those combinations? So we're starting with 30. This is where I begin, the top number. I divide 30 by 1. Does 1 and 30 somehow give you a 17? Nope, doesn't work. I divide 30 by 2. Does 2 and 15 somehow give you 17? It does. So I'm going to write down a 2 and a 15. Now in order to combine these and get a positive 17, they both have to be positive. They multiply to equal positive 30. They combine to give you 17. So I'm going to write this down, leaving a big blank here. Now in this position, I'm going to write down these two numbers. And when I write these down, these two have to add up to 17x. So do not forget to put the symbols plus 2 and plus 15 with x's behind. These two have to add up to 17x. Okay, what can I factor out of a negative 6 and out of a positive 2? I'm going to factor out a negative 2x. Negative 2 times what value equals a negative 6? 3. I need 2x's. I attach one more. Negative 2 times what gives us a positive 2? Negative 1. So when I distribute, which is multiplying, I get negative 6x squared and negative 2x. Whatever's in parentheses goes in back, and I'm going to write a really light question mark. What value times 3 equals positive 15? If I only write 5, it would be wrong. I do need a plus sign. So positive 15x, I've got that. And when I distribute, I get a negative 5. Got it. Okay, all of the hard work is done. In front of the front half and the back half, they both contain the parentheses 3x minus 1. In front of the first parentheses, a negative 2x. In front of the second parentheses, is a positive 5. And we're done. Off to the side. I'm taking a times c to equal negative 30, and my b is negative 7. Go slow on that part. If you have the wrong numerical values, your entire problem will be wrong. Again, a times c, including the symbols, and our b is negative 7. So now I'm thinking of the combination. Again, some of you have good number sense, so you're just going to do this in your head. Others, we're always starting with the top number, 30 divided by 1. 1 and 30 do not somehow combine to give you 7. So I had to take this number and divide it by 2. 2 and 15 do not give you 7. I take it, I divide it by 3. 3 and 10 can give you 7. What needs to be the symbols to end up by combining to get a negative 7? Negative 10 and positive 3. So they need to be different signs to multiply to achieve negative 30. And when you combine, the larger of the two numbers will be negative. So off to the side, I have 15x squared, leaving a big space. Now in this space, I'm going to come back and write down what I have. I have a negative 10x and a positive 3x. These need to combine to equal your b. Okay, what's the most I can factor out of 15x squared and a 10x squared? Would be 5x. 5 times 3 is 15, attaching one more x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, attaching an x. Write down whatever is in parentheses with a little question mark in front. I'm going after the last two terms. What times 3x gives you a positive 3x? Don't forget the sign, it's a positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. What do they both have? 3x minus 2 and 5x plus 1. In example number 3, I'm going to come off to the side and I'm going to make this large x. a times c, be careful of your symbols, a times c is negative 12. And my B term is a positive 1. Make sure to put the symbols here. Now, again, what if you don't have great number sense? Well, let's do this together. I take 12, because I'm always starting with this number, and divide it by 1. 1 and 12 do not somehow give you 1. 
I take 12 divided by 2. Does 2 and 6 give you 1? No, I take 12, I divide it by 3. 3 and 4 can get you a positive 1, so I write down 3 and 4. If you can do that in your head, awesome. I'm just showing for students who may be confused how I come up with the combination. Now, they have to be different symbols if when multiplying you get a negative. So they're different symbols. This tells me the larger of the two numbers is positive. These multiply to give you negative 12 and combine to give you positive 1. Negative 12x squared, big line, positive 1. Okay, negative 3x and positive 4x. What is the most that I can divide out of negative 3 and negative 12? I'm going to divide out negatives whenever possible. possible. So I'm going to factor out a negative 3 and I can take out an x. I'm left with positive 4. Let's make sure. Negative 12 and I need one more x. Negative 3, and I have an x. Whatever's in parentheses, I write them back. And make a little question mark here. I'm going after the last two terms. What times 4x equals positive 4x? Plus 1. Is plus 1 times plus 1, 1? It is. What do they have in common? The parentheses 4x plus 1. What's in front of the first? What's in front of the second? We're done. Our last one that you're watching, what is 14 times 3? Please correct me and see, is it 42? You're checking for me. You've got a calculator. Am I correct? Is 14 times 3 42? Okay, so negative 42 and negative 1. And again, I feel like after helping in several classes, the biggest, the biggest part of confusion is how do you get these? So I start with 42, I divide it by 1. 1 and 42 does not give you a negative 1 when you combine. Divide it by 2. 2 and 21, nope. Divided by 3, 3 and 14. Now when you get a number that's a decimal, we know that's not going to work. We divide it by 5, we get a decimal. We divide it by 6, okay, 6 and 7 is a difference of 1. So I write 6 and 7. When there's a negative up front, and we produce this number by multiplying, it means it has to be different signs. So these are going to be different signs, one's positive and one's negative. The larger number has to be negative. Let's confirm, multiply and combine. So I write down the problem, and I have plus 6x and minus 7. I'm going to, oh, and what did I forget? I forgot an x. That does make a difference. So I underline the first two. What's the largest numerical value I can factor out? Not a 6, not a 4, what is it? A 2? 2 times 7 is 14. I need one more x. 2 times 3 is 6. Let's make sure. 14x squared, 6x. I'm going to rewrite the parenthesis in back. What times 7 gives us a negative 1? Negative 1. So this is negative 7x, confirm. This is negative 3 when I multiply, confirm. They both have a 7x plus 3. In front of the first is 2x, and in front of the back is a negative 1.